All right, you also, I um, did what I thought was my first YouTube short the other day. And after I posted, I saw it was actually my second one. I apparently had done one, oh, sometime earlier this year when I hit 2,000 subs. But my second short, which I thought was my first, was on this one, the North American Arms Sidewinder. Um... I had just got one of these in trade, and I asked if you guys wanted to see a review, and I had one person come back and say, yep, they'd like to see a review on it. So uh, out of the 2,300 people who viewed it, uh, thank you for the one person who said you wanted to see the review. But what do we got here? We have got the North American Arms Sidewinder. Now, if y'all are regulars to my channel, you probably have seen my video on the Pug, which is another version of this in North American Arms. I actually have it in my pocket. It's my household pajama gun. This is pajama gun. This one is always in my pocket, walking around the house. And I carry it in some holster that I got years ago off of eBay. And you can tell when I first got this holster, it was nice, matte, smooth leather. And you can sell over the years, it's really gotten uh, broke in nicely. Uh, check out my video on this if you want to. If I remember to, I'll put a link in the description of this one for this one. And I also have a video on the North American Arms 22 Short Revolver. But, the Sidewinder. Let me show y'all real quick what the packaging looks like on this. Now my box is a little beat up. But you've got a little cardboard sleeve. And then you've got uh, a plastic box for this one. I think nowadays most of their newer revolvers are coming in the metal lock box. So this one might be an older one. Uh, maybe a first generation of this. But you've got a little plastic box. This is one of the folding holsters that I have for it. Uh, it replaces the hand grip with a little folding holster thing. And then you've got your paperwork. Um, I think maybe some other goodies, like right up in here. You've got some goodies in here, but nothing really spectacular, nothing to write home about. So that's the packaging for y'all that want to see it. And again, I think that's changed to a metal box on newer generations. Uh, this is a holster by Stoner Holsters that came with this gun. Uh, I did have to do some wet molding on it to get it to fit it the way I liked it. It was a little bit tight and it wasn't formed quite enough. But uh, yeah, this is turning into a pretty good holster. What's nice about it is it does have a little pouch for 10 extra rounds that you can put right there. And then uh, this fits in there. And these are the five rounds that are usually in it. Now I like to carry the uh, old... Who is this? Spear. This is the Spear Gold Dot 22 Mag Self-Defense Ammunition. It's designed for short barrel guns, just like this, actually. And it performs pretty good from the ballistics I've seen. But let's get a let's get a weight of the Sidewinder unloaded first. 6.7 ounces. Not bad, folks. Five rounds of 22 Magnum, a single action. And then we will put my carry weight on here. It comes in at 10.7. And that's with uh, the weapon, the holster, and then 15 rounds of 22 mag. Not bad. Now let's talk about this thing a little bit. <clears throat> a lot of people kind of question the effective effectiveness of these little uh, North American arms. Uh, and I do too. I'll be the first to tell you, yeah, there, there's much better choices out there for concealed carry, of course. But uh, a lot of times you need something small, you need something lightweight, you just want something that is easy to carry, you know, and that's sometimes where this might have a little, a little fit. Now, normally on these types of little North American arms, to unload them, it's a process that you have to go through. I will show you guys how it normally has to go on this pug. Normally, you have to... And you can see, I have magically unloaded this through the process of video editing. But normally, to unload one of these, what you have to do is put it in half cock. Oh, I think this one already was in half cock. Yeah, I put it in half cock right there. They have different configurations. This the pug works like this. You pull it out and twist it, and you pull out this pin. Some of them have a pin with a little spring plunger in. You push in that plunger and pull it out. But either way, you pull out the pin. And then the entire cylinder comes out of the firearm. You, uh, you can take the pin that you use just to remove things, and you can poke out your empties if necessary. Pluck them out, however you need to get them out of there. Put in your fresh ones, and then you just 
go backwards on the process. Put the cylinder back in. You take your little pin, you put it back in there and twist it in place, uh, and you're ready to go. You're still in half cock. The next step is to take it and put it down in the safety notch. We'll show you how on this one too. Uh, and then you're ready to carry or you're ready to pull and uh, you know have some fun shooting at some cans or whatever at the range. The sidewinder is a little different than that. Um, the way it works is pretty similar. Is first step is put it in half cock like so. This one, the whole entire cylinder swings out like a traditional revolver. So basically you uh, pull this pin towards the front, push on the cylinder with your index finger on back, and then it just rolls right out. Now who here can tell me what's unusual about this configuration? <laughs> Most other revolvers that load this way, the cylinder opens this way. So if you're a righty, you know, you have experience putting your cartridges in with your left hand like I do. This one's kind of weird. I guess left-handers might like this more because they can, you know, uh, hold a, continue to hold a firearm with a dominant hand. But yeah, and when you want to eject, it functions like a normal revolver with an ejector rod. You just push this thing and it pushes, it. I mean, it doesn't, push them far enough to fall out, but it pushes them high enough to where you can be able to get a hold of them and pluck them back in. Load it up, and then you push this back in. Now, this is a little tricky going back in because you've got the pressure on this pin pushing against this. Um, the way I like to do it is I'll put equal amounts of pressure right here on the, uh, what do they call it, the crane and the cylinder, and just push it in until it clicks in place. Now, you'll notice that the sidewinder has these little um, ears right here on the sides of the cylinder. I'm sure there's a technical name for it. Most of the other North American arms do not, okay? The reason the Sidewinder has that there, uh, I don't know. Maybe someone can tell me. But what the happens is that makes it difficult to see if you're in a safety notch, but North American arms has thought about this. So we'll put this, there's a safety notch right there. We'll maneuver this up here and put it into that safety notch, okay? We're in the notch. They were nice enough on this part to put these little indexes. So you have a wide one and a narrow one. And to know you're in a safety notch, your cylinder marks will line up with that. This is where your round would usually go. If this were loaded, you would see the edge of the round right here. And the narrow one goes to narrow. And it's only on this side that they have it. But that's because you can't easily look right here. I mean, you can see it on the edge, but it's not as easy to spot if it's in that safety notch as it is with the traditional North American arms like that one. If you're confused about what the safety notch does, well, you don't want to carry this with the hammer resting on a live round like so, because if you were to drop this and hit this hammer, there's a chance you can have a uh, negligent discharge. Hammer, strike, the, uh, the rim fire, boom, it happens. So that's why they're kind enough to put these little safety notches. And once it's in the safety notch, you know, the cylinder won't, won't rotate. It keeps it in there. So, um, yeah, that's the Sidewinder. I mean, the advantage is it's easier to load than the other ones. Again, you just push this little pin to the front, pop that thing out, eject your empties, load up your other ones, and then push your cylinder shut, and you're good to go. Beyond that, it's just basically this particular one is a 22 Magnum. I think actually all the Sidewinders are 22 Magnum, but you can also get them with the 22 Long Rifle Cylinder. Now, the 22 Long Rifle Cylinder, I think, is about 100 bucks because they actually send you the cylinder. You get the whole cylinder and crane assembly. And to remove it, you take out this screw and uh, eject it like normal. And then basically this whole piece right here will lift out and then you put in the long rifle one. So that means like most of them, uh, if you do have one that's 22 mag only, mine only came with the Magnum cylinder. If you want the long rifle cylinder, you actually have to send the whole gun back to North American Arms because they'll match up a long rifle cylinder to it, make sure it's timed correctly and all that good stuff. But yeah, nice gun folks. Uh, is it the best? No, the best is one I don't have. Um, they actually have one called the Ranger. The newest version is the Ranger 2. The Ranger opens even easier than this one. The Ranger is hinged right here, like the old Smith & Wesson Schofields, 
you pull a lever right here on top and the entire thing breaks open like this, kind of like a single shot shotgun. And then when you break it open, the extractor pushes up the rounds. You just pluck them out, reload them, and then flip it back down and close it. I'd rather have a Ranger over this, but uh, I just happened to get very lucky on this in a trade. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you all. I actually traded a first-generation Ruger LCP for this. Um, I'm talking not the LCP-2, one of the original LCPs. Uh, the guy's just a nice guy. He wanted to, and the LCP is a far superior carrier weapon to this, but he just wanted something something to carry, and so he didn't mind losing. Uh, the reason I say that, around here, the first generation LCPs are generally worth 170, 200 bucks. Uh, I don't think you can get into one of these right now for less than 450, probably. Uh, Y'all tell me, tell me what they're going for. Uh, right now, this is December of uh, 2022 when I'm shooting this video, so. That's it, y'all. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, drop them down in the comments. And thanks for watching. Y'all take care.